Welcome to Chemotherapy and You. This is a class geared to provide information for caregivers and patients undergoing chemotherapy. Objectives. To inform patients and caregivers about chemotherapy and common associated side effects. To provide information about initial interventions and treatments of common chemotherapy side effects that can be performed at home. To provide guidelines for when to contact the office for patients experiencing side effects from chemotherapy. And finally, to provide resources for patients and caregivers who wish to learn more about cancer treatments and their side effects. For today's class, we will be focusing on gastrointestinal or GI side effects that may occur with chemotherapy. Remember, you may have several side effects, some side effects, or none at all. This depends on the type and amount of chemotherapy you receive and how your body reacts. Constipation is when bowel movements become less frequent and stools are hard, dry, and difficult to pass. When you are constipated, you may feel bloated, nauseated, or may have painful bowel movements. You may also belch, pass gas, or have stomach cramps and or pressure in your rectum. Under normal circumstances, you should have a soft bowel movement every two to three days. Drugs such as chemotherapy, pain medication, or nausea medication can cause constipation. It can also occur when patients are not active, dehydrated, or on a low fiber diet. There are several ways to manage constipation. First, keep a record of your bowel movements to ensure that you are having a bowel movement every two to three days, as this makes it easier to figure out if you are having constipation. Stay hydrated by drinking at least eight cups of water or other fluids each day. Be active every day. You can be active by walking, riding a bike, or doing yoga. If you cannot walk, ask about exercises that you can perform in a chair or bed. A high fiber diet can also help with constipation, but remember to drink plenty of fluids to help soften your stools. Examples of high fiber food include whole grain breads and cereals, dried beans and peas, raw vegetables, fresh and dried fruit, nuts, seeds, and popcorn. Many people find that eating prunes or drinking prune juice, coffee, or senna teas also help with constipation. It is important to talk with your doctor about a bowel maintenance regimen if you are regularly taking pain medications as this is a source of constipation. Check with your doctor before using fiber supplements, laxatives, stool softeners, or enemas. Do not use suppositories, enemas, or anything else that must be inserted into the rectum if your white blood cell count or your platelet counts are low. Call your doctor if you have not had a bowel movement in greater than three days and notify your doctor immediately if you have constipation that is associated with abdominal pain and or vomiting. Diarrhea is defined as frequent bowel movements that may be loose or watery. Chemotherapy can cause diarrhea because it harms healthy cells that line your large and small intestines. Diarrhea can also be caused by infection or medications that you are on, such as antibiotics and or medications used to treat constipation. There are several ways of managing diarrhea at home. Most importantly, staying hydrated. Drink 8 to 12 cups of clear liquid each day. This includes water, clear broth, ginger ale, or low sugar electrolyte drinks. Drink slowly and choose drinks that are at room temperature. Let carbonated drinks lose their fizz before you drink them. Slowly graduate your diet by starting with clear liquids. Advancing to the brat diet, including bananas, rice, applesauce, or toast, and if tolerated, you may advance to a bland soft or regular diet. Avoid foods high in fiber, sugar, fat, and caffeine, as well as milk products, as they may worsen diarrhea. Increase your intake of foods high in sodium and potassium, as this may help symptoms. It is important to notify your doctor if you are having more than three to four loose, watery stools in a 24-hour period, or if you have diarrhea associated with abdominal pain or cramping. Remember, do not take any medications for new symptoms of diarrhea without first contacting your doctor. Many types of chemotherapy target fast-growing cells, which helps to fight your cancer. However, they also attack normal fast-growing cells, such as the ones that line your mouth, 
throat, and lips. Your teeth, gums, and the glands that help make saliva can also be affected. Common problems with the mouth and throat may include dry mouth, mouth sores, thrush, or a yeast infection also caused by candidiasis, difficulty eating or drinking due to mouth pain, bleeding gums when your platelet count is low, infections of the gums or teeth, as well as changes in the way food tastes or smell, with the most common complaints being food that tastes like metal or chalk, has no taste at all, or does not taste or smell like it used to. There are several ways to manage mouth and throat changes at home. First, visit your dentist at least two weeks prior to starting chemotherapy, if possible. Inform your dentist that you are starting chemotherapy, and if possible, plan regular scheduled dental checkups. If you cannot go to the dentist prior to starting chemotherapy, ask your doctor when it is safe to go. Good dental hygiene is important. Clean your mouth, teeth, gums, and tongue three times daily using a soft bristle toothbrush as well as baking soda toothpaste. Do not use mouthwash that has alcohol. Instead, rinse your mouth three to four times a day with a solution of one-fourth teaspoon baking soda and one-eighth teaspoon of salt and one cup of warm water. Follow this with a plain water rinse. If you wear dentures, make sure that they fit well and keep them clean. Also, limit the length of time that you wear them. If you have mouth pain, choose foods that are moist, soft, and easy to chew or swallow. Stay away from things that can hurt, scrape, or burn your mouth such as sharp or crunchy foods, spicy foods, citrus or juices such as orange, lemon, or grapefruit, or salty foods that may cause discomfort. It is important that you do not use tobacco or drink alcohol when your mouth is sore. If you experience dry mouth, increase your hydration. Citrus candies and or biotin products may also be helpful. If you have mouth pain, ulcers, or white patches in your mouth, call your doctor. Sometimes this is an indication that your blood counts may be low. Special combination mouthwashes are available by prescription that may help treat the pain so that you can eat or drink. Some, but not all types of chemotherapy can cause nausea, vomiting, or both. Nausea is when you feel sick to your stomach, like you are going to throw up, while vomiting is when you actually throw up. You may also have dry heaves, which is when your body tries to vomit even though your stomach is empty. Nausea and vomiting can occur as early as the same day of your treatment or as late as several days later. The best way to manage nausea and vomiting at home is prevention. Plan your meals and snacks. Some people feel better when they eat a light snack or meal before chemotherapy, while others feel better when they have chemotherapy on an empty stomach. You will learn what's right for you. Instead of three large meals each day, you might feel better if you eat five to six small meals or snacks. Stay away from foods and drinks with strong smells, such as coffee, fish, onions, garlic, and foods that are cooking. Have foods and drinks that are warm or cool, not hot or cold. When you feel like vomiting, breathing deeply and slowly or getting fresh air may help. Finally, it's important to take your medication exactly the way your doctor prescribes it in order to minimize nausea. Notify your doctor if you vomit several times per day for longer than one day or you vomit immediately after you drink fluids. Call your physician's office if your nausea medication is not helping and notify the office if you show signs of dehydration, which include dry mouth, dry skin, decreased urinary output, low blood pressure, dizziness with standing, rapid heart rate, or weakness. In conclusion, review the drug-specific printed materials provided to you by your physician carefully. Ask questions. Remember, there is no stupid question. Be aware that every patient is actually different. You may experience some of the side effects, none of the side effects, or several of the side effects listed. Keep a notebook or journal of any side effects that you do experience and when they occur. For example, did nausea begin two days after chemotherapy or begin one week later? 
bring this journal with you to your next visit, as this may help your doctor know exactly how to treat your symptoms. Take advantage of offered support groups, patient programs, and educational offerings. And remember, the physicians and staff here at CCI are here to support you through your cancer treatment. Please do not hesitate to call or ask if you are uncertain about any side effects that you are experiencing. For more information, please see available online resources listed. And thank you for participating in Chemotherapy and You.